Hello traders, it is Wednesday, July 19th. We're about four hours into trading. Let's take a look at our last pick, see how it fared, do some market analysis, and then let's find a new pick. That's how every one of these videos works. I want you to see that these picks are working out. We had a really good trade if you followed my exact instructions. So let's run through that. A-M-Z-N, Amazon.com. That was our pick of the day. I did the video Sunday. I liked it for a number of reasons. One is that the search that I used is called buy into earnings. These stocks rally 75% of the time once they get inside that two week window before they announce earnings. And they've done this over the course of the last three years. That's a nice trend to be able to follow. So. We're already getting probability on our side. Amazon was in that list. These are our automated trend lines, and you can see how we've got a longer term major trend line that was breached to the upside. We also had a high plus trend line that was breached and another high plus trend line right here. The stock is above all the major moving averages. It has a tendency to rally into earnings. It has plenty of room to get to this previous high, so everything looked good. Let's zoom in a little bit to get a more granular look at what I was considering when I put this trade on. You can see horizontal resistance right here. Stock had just broken out. I liked everything about Amazon, except that the stock is very choppy, choppy, choppy. Three steps forward, two steps backwards. Please go watch that previous video. The market's been in a nice uptrend, but until the last week, it was very choppy. Same thing. Three steps forward, two steps backwards. That means that we need to buy dips, and then when we get that rally, we need to take profits into strength when the stock and the market hit resistance. Go to the sidelines. Wait for the next dip, reload, repeat. If you use that process, you're going to be able to take advantage of the current market pattern. We'll take a look at that in just a second. But you can see Amazon, three steps forward, two steps back, three steps forward, two steps back. Here we took about four steps forward and only one step backwards, but it's very choppy. You do not need to chase anything in this market. And yes, there will be some stocks that zoom higher and they never look back. So for those handful of stocks, you're going to have to have a mindset that allows you to just let them go. Let them run. Know that the vast majority of stocks that you find that look really good on a D1 basis, they're going to give you that pullback. They're going to give you that buying opportunity. So what we do is we set alerts. I'm going to take these trend lines off and we're going to zoom in to the H1 chart. Why are we going to a one hour chart? Because these are the exact instructions that I gave you in the last video. I said Amazon looks great. It's going to pull back. We're going to use LRSI to help us with our entry. We're going to set an alert at the time of the video. I had mentioned LRSI is above 80. Here's what we'd like to see for the stock. We want LRSI to pull back below 20. And when it rises back above 20, you can see that this happened on July 18th, yesterday, and at 2 o'clock, an hour before the market closed. So right in here, was where you were getting that condition fulfilled. And so the way that we set those alerts, I'll give you a quick refresher, right click, create alert. We go in, we select LRSI, we select the one hour time frame. Why did I select one hour? Well, in that video, I mentioned to you that I wanted to have a nice substantial pullback. And so we want LRSI to be above 20. It's already above 20. So when I add that indicator, I need to mark this box because I want it to go below 20 
and then poke above 20. So it did exactly that. It went below 20. And then when it poked up above 20, I got my alert right in here. Click save. It's done. I don't need to spend another minute watching Amazon. All I need to do is when I get my pop-up alert, I take a look at what the stock has done. And in this particular case, you can see how it beautifully held this horizontal breakout right in here. And yes, the stock did pull back. And so here was our entry yesterday, right about here, an hour before the close. So yeah, the stock dipped a little bit late yesterday, but look at it today. What a fantastic entry point. So you're in somewhere around the, let's call it 13250, 133 level, something like that. And it's been as high as 136 today. It's choppy. You have a nice entry point. When you have a nice entry point on a stock, I've already got built-in cushion in this trade. So worst case, I could put a stop at my entry price and not lose any money on it. I have breathing room. I'm not all emotional about it. Now the stock can continue to float higher. And I know that it announces earnings next week. And over 75% of the time, the stock tends to rally into that earnings announcement. And if I look at the D1 chart, I can see that the stock wants to push higher. It gets through this resistance level. It's going to stage another leg higher. Folks, that's how we do this. We don't need to be out there chasing. We've made it very easy to find these stocks. Once the stock gets on our radar, it's having a nice major technical breakout. We're going to look for another one today. It's got heavy volume. It's got relative strength. In some cases, maybe the company has just announced earnings. Lots of checkboxes marked. But that doesn't mean that we have to go crazy with FOMO chasing the stock higher and higher. Set the alert, wait for the pullback, then we have a really nice entry point for the trade and we can evaluate the price action on the way down. We can evaluate what the market's doing. Breathe easy. You can use any strategy that you want. We've got a decent market tailwind. Let's take a look at what the market's currently doing. So here you can see a five minute chart. And if we zoom out to a 15 minute chart, you can see some real strength this week. The market has been really powering higher. There was a tell earlier in the week, but I didn't know how this would play out. Here's the scenario. You've got a sell-off on Friday, and this came off of a new 52-week high. Typically, when you get a red candle off of a new 52-week high, you're going to see some follow-through selling. That's not what happened Monday. Monday, they came in, they kind of tested the bid a little bit, but it didn't take long, and buyers were right back at it. So, you only had one little tiny day of profit taking. So this really didn't shake out any bullish speculators. It's one little day and it wasn't that dramatic. It wasn't a huge market move anyway. So now on Monday, the market closes at a new 52 week high or very close to it. You can see right there. All right, yesterday, Tuesday, you get a tiny little down open. Man, did they gobble that thing up. You can see the nice stack candles and the market never looked back. So now today we've got another gap up. Well, on these gap ups, you have to be careful because that's going to attract profit takers. So what happens on these gap ups? You had a gap up Friday and you could see you had selling pressure. You had a gap up today and then you had selling pressure. So what happens is these buyers come in. You've got bullish speculators who saw that big rally yesterday. They see the gap up today. They get FOMO. Oh my God, I have to buy it now. I got to have it right now. And then they come in and then they regret buying because then the market starts to show signs of weakness. And so now they bail out of the position and go, oh gosh, not again. I should have waited. Yeah, of course you should have waited. When you have a gap up, that's our worst case scenario because we can't look for relative strength because there are a lot of fakes that are also joining that rally. 
plus, a lot of the upside potential has been exhausted on that early move. So you really have to be patient and you've got to wait for that bid check. Well, now we've got a lower high and we're testing this support with greater frequency. There's nothing to be worried about for longer term swing trades. This is a choppy move lower. Mixed overlapping candles. So this is not a powerful round of profit taking. When we go into the D1 chart, you're going to see that we had a nice little cup and handle formation here. I had pointed that out to you in my video on Sunday. That's why we're focusing on the long side. Cup and handle formation, nice strong uptrend, break out through that horizontal resistance. Yes, we want to be long. We don't want to chase, so we want to find a really good stock that's powering higher, and we want to buy it on a dip. Pretty easy. So that's what we're currently going to be doing, is we're going to be looking for a really strong stock, and we're going to be setting ourselves up for a dip. And then I'll tell you what my expectations on that dip are. As long as everything holds true, we're going to be in great shape. And so for Amazon, I didn't mind if we were getting a little bit of a dip in here. I expected this breakout to be challenged. It was challenged. It was tested. And the stock bounced right off of it. That confirms the breakout. And now we should see strength into earnings. That's how those alerts work. What I didn't want to see is I didn't want to see a market meltdown while I was waiting. And I didn't want to see this was resistance, now support, violated. So as we come down and we check that breakout, if I see long red candle below the breakout, long red candle, long red candle, then I'm not going to get my LRSI alert triggered. And when it does finally trigger and I see that type of price action, it tells me, hmm, you better look elsewhere for your lawn because Amazon is not the one. It's not what you expected. So now go find another stock and keep setting all of your alerts so that you do find the ones that are strong. And in this case, I figured it could test that breakout. Did so successfully. We're in at a nice price. Now let's find our next trade. So we'll go through our searches. I've got to keep this video fairly brief. So I'm going to go into Pop Bull. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat, this stock that I'm going to feature today is going to take a little while to set up. But it's okay, because the alert that I'm going to set is not going to cost me any grief. I'm not going to have to monitor the stock. I'm just going to wait for it to trigger. So if I go through my lists, these are on our pop bull list. These are all excellent swing trading candidates because they are breaking out through technical resistance. Choppy, choppy, choppy. Boy, would you want to set a alert on this to buy a dip? For sure. Nice defined trend line here. When it comes back and it tests that trend line, yeah, you want to be buying on that trend line as long as it holds. Those are your buying opportunities. A little bit too choppy for me, not that interested. This stock is trying to get through this resistance level right in here. Hasn't been able to yet. Very, very choppy. Forming a base, though. I do like it. Let's get our major moving averages up there. Now you can see where they all come into play. Fairly limited upside. I don't want to have that type of ceiling on any trade that I might take. N T R S. I like it. Now right now, I don't really want to be chasing stocks that are making a new 52-week high that have gone parabolic. There are many of them. The reason that I don't want to chase them at this late stage is because they've already got great news priced in and the downside is much greater. So when you've got a stock that has this skyscraper type formation, I, I need to catch that train much earlier to be interested in it. This one is just starting to break out. So you can see it's above the 20-day, above the 50-day, and above the 100-day. Plenty of room 
to the 200-day moving average. Lots of room, nice support at the open today. That was horizontal resistance at 76.50. Now that is horizontal support. What I'd like even better is if the stock had a pullback and it preserved half of this long green candle. When you get these really long green candles like this, you want to see the majority of them preserved. When you get a long red candle like this and you're looking to short, you want to see that halfway point preserved. You don't want to be rallying above it. Well, in this case, couldn't even get above that closing price and then whoosh, you get the next leg lower. I like bank stocks. They've been announcing earnings. You can see NTRS, Northern Trust, announced before the open today, hence the B on the chart. The market liked the reaction. But you can see it's a fairly choppy stock, so this is not going to take off. It's a bank. There's no new technology or anything that they're announcing. This stock is just going to plot its course higher. And now some of the threat of a potential credit crisis seems to be coming out of the market because there haven't been any other major bank failures after the two that we saw last quarter. So everybody's taking a deep breath. This stock has plenty of room to the upside. Let's put on our trend line so we can see where they come into play. And you can see there's one right here at this high. So it's going to have to work through that one, but it's a minor one formed by only two candles that were very close together. Nothing major. I'm not going to give this a lot of waiting here. This is a nice technical breakout through horizontal resistance that we had today. So yes, this is super nice stuff. So I've got a lot of check boxes marked here. You can see that relative strength is still below zero, but after the price action today, it's going to be coming up very, very quickly, and it should be strong relative to the market. So here's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see this stock digest some of these gains, and I'd like to see it pull back a little bit, maybe into the middle of this green bar. I would be happy with that. It's still well above this horizontal breakout. So all systems go. I'm still okay with it. But I'd also like to see it a little sticky around that 100-day moving average. I don't want to see that 79.50 level given up. I'd like it to kind of hold there. I'm okay with it if it comes down to $78. I don't have a problem with that. That's still well above this previous horizontal resistance, now support. Here's what I don't want to see. If the market has a little bit of weakness, I don't want to see long red candle through that 100-day moving average and then long red candle and long red candle, giving up this entire green bar very easily and very quickly, and then challenging this horizontal resistance. I have the alert set. That means I'm probably going to be watching this stock for a day or two or three while it comes in and digests some of those gains. During that time, I want to see some mixed overlapping candles and a stubborn move down into the middle of this candle. And then when I get my alert, I'm going to feel very confident that it's going to make another surge higher and is going to try and take out this trend line and perhaps even ch challenge the 200-day moving average. What option strategies can I use? Could I buy call debit spreads? Sure. Could I sell out of the money, put credit spreads below the 100 day moving average when it gets back above it. Sure, I could do all that. I could go down to the 7650 level and I could sell a bullish put spread down there. How aggressive you want to get with a trade is completely up to you. It's up to how confident you are that the market's going to continue to move higher and in your confidence that the stock is going to find support at that particular level. So for our purposes, I'm just going to be assuming that we buy stock. So I'm going to create an alert, just like the one that I placed a few minutes ago. I'm going to click LRSI, and I would like to see LRSI above 20 on a one-hour basis. So I need to go back in and adjust this to 0.20, and I will add this, 
and I'm going to add this condition here so that it has to go false and then true and then I will get my alert. So I'm going to save this and then we're going to go into the one hour chart so that we can take a look at where LRSI currently is. Well, it is at 1. It's above 80. So it's going to have to do pretty much like this. It's going to have to come below 80, come below 20, below 20, below 20. Then I'm going to have my entry point when it crosses back above 20. And during that time, I want to see the vast majority of this nice, big, long move preserved. By all means, I want to have this horizontal resistance level now support at 76.50 preserved. If it's not preserved and if we test it easily, I don't want to have anything to do with the stock. As it gets closer and closer to that 76.50 level, as it gets closer and closer to that 100-day moving average, I want buyers to feel like they will not have another opportunity to buy the stock this cheaply. And that's what prevents the stock from retracing all the way back down, is buyers are scooping it up before it even has a chance to drop below it. That's the price action I'm looking for. This is the stock that I'd like to use the strategy for. I believe the market's still going to have some upside to it. Probably another few weeks worth of upside as we start getting through mega cap tech earnings. Apple, I believe, is on August 3rd. Once all the mega cap tech companies have announced, the air gets let out of the balloon. We start getting into the middle of August. You've got the Fed in recess. Nobody's minding the shop. The market gets a little bit nervous. Potential rate hike in September when the Fed reconvenes. Usually from the middle of August into September, October, the market sees a period of weakness. So that's when you have to tread a little bit more cautiously. But we still have a few weeks of really decent price action. The market bid should remain strong. Don't chase. Find your strong stocks with D1 technical breakouts on heavy volume. Find that relative strength. Note that stock. Set your alerts. Get the alert on a dip. Make sure that the pullback has been nice and contained and unorganized with mixed overlapping candles and light volume. When you see that, then you know that the pullback is not very legitimate. It's no big threat. It's simply providing you with a really nice entry point and that the next leg higher is coming soon. Thanks so much for watching. I will be posting another video probably Sunday evening. We will see you then. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.